news flash for you. Everyone thinks you need six months, a computer science degree, and $50,000 to spend on a development team to build a mobile app. And so in this video, I want to prove to you that with modern AI tools, we can go from a notebook sketch to an actual functioning app in less than an hour. And it's not gonna be some dumb Hello World app where the app just loads up, but it doesn't actually do anything. It'll be something that you'd actually consider using. So let's hop in. So there's gonna be three tools that we use for this process. The first one is Lovable. Now, what Lovable is gonna allow us to do is it is going to allow us to mock up our user interface. Meaning before we get to the point of actually building an app, we wanna see approximately what is this thing gonna look like, right? So we're gonna spend the time in a visual editor building this thing out, and then we will transfer what we have built to an actual coding tool that can do the work for us to build the thing out, right? So we have this vague kind of idea for an app that you likely have, it's maybe floating around in your brain, and we want to translate that to something. Now, my inspiration for this app, I will put the screenshots up above my face right now. And so we have this prompt here, which I will make available for you in the description below. And you're just gonna copy this entire thing. You don't need to really worry about what it says right now. And then we're gonna get down to this section, which is where we have our main idea and then our MVP. So then we have our target audience, our unique, selling proposition and then we get into this feature list and so what it's going to do is it's going to go it's going to list out all of our primary features right from the authentication and onboarding what needs to be there how does the audio recording and processing happen how did the notes management happen what does the ai chat look like and so on and then if you use this prompt that i'm giving you it's going to have these critical questions and so what you want to do is if you go back and forth and answer these questions about five or six times eventually it's going to resolve down and say, okay, you are ready to go. You've answered all the questions that it had for you and then it's ready to rock to the next stage. So after we're there, there's one more prompt. Now, one other little icing on the cake that you can add in here is a tool called Mobbin. So what Mobbin is, is they just collect screens of every major app really that you can think of. So Spotify, Airbnb, ChatGPT. So you're going to select open, which is going to load these all in here. And then once these are loaded, we are just gonna hit go and we are gonna see what it designs for us. All right, so after a few minutes of processing, this is what we have. So we have this little splash screen here getting started. Now, obviously we have some like generic logos and things like that because it's not making some incredibly unique logo for us, right? So this is something where if we wanted this floating thing, for example, to be the actual logo of our app, we'd have to go do that separately. But still pretty cool that it's building in this interactivity and has this nice little splash screen for us. As we continue to scroll down, we can see what some of these interfaces look like. So if we wanted to start a voice recording, for example, we can hit that play button and then we can see it's got some interactivity in here. This would obviously be a real countdown. So right now, again, we're just mocking up what we kind of want this thing to look like. If we were to hit pause, we can see that it turns into this yellow state. And then if we were to hit that stop button, it stops the recording process. Now, if we keep scrolling down over here, we have this note section. So now from here, there's two ways that we can continue to build on top of this. I would say that if you're, again, a beginner, what you want to do is try to flesh out what this experience is going to kind of flow like while you're inside of Lovable because it's going to be a lot easier when you can see what's happening. So for example, what I want to happen is that I should be able to click into one of these now. Like if I want to go in and see the full transcript or see a summary of it or do whatever, I need to be able to click in and actually interact with that, which obviously I can't do yet. So that is what we are going to do next. So in order to get this thing working on our local computer, all we need is a GitHub account. So you can pause the video and go get one, or if you already have one, good for you. So now whether you're on a Mac or Windows, you have an app like this called a terminal. And so we want to go in and we just want to go into any project. So you would create a folder and you want to go into that folder. So for example, my folder build app in 13 minutes. And so in order to do that, we're going to need an AI based coding environment, which I would recommend if you are a beginner to use something like Cursor, which has a free trial. So if you were to head over to cursor.com, this is where you would need to go. You can download it. If you were to go look at the pricing, you get a two week free pro trial, which should be all you need for what we are about to do. And so this prompt, all you need to update is the names of your directories, right? So we're gonna say, hey, we have this directory called voice. 
which is that Expo app, the React Native Expo app. And then we have this directory called Whisper Scribe Lab, in my case, which was what we had in Lovable, which we pushed to GitHub and downloaded. So we have both of these, and your job is to take the designs from that Lovable web app and turn them into a mobile app design, okay? All right, guys, so it just got complete with that. So it went through this entire thing, and you can see I haven't touched it since I sent this prompt, this exact prompt we went through. So boom, it was there, and then it just went through, and it did its whole thing. Right, it's doing its entire thing. It's creating all the files, checking off its to-do list. It's doing the entire thing. And now it's gotten to this point where it thinks it's done and it's saying, hey, let's start this thing up and see if it works. So that is what we're going to do. So what we need to do is go back to our terminal and we need to go into that directory. And so the way you do that on like a, a Unix operating system, like on a, on a Mac, for example, is by typing in CD and then the name of the directory you're trying to go to. So if I say CD voice, it's going to take me into the voice directory, it's loading it up, loading it up and boom. So there we go. So now that we're full screen, we can see if this thing actually works. So we have our voice notes screen. We can hit get started. And now we're in like an interface. So I noticed like some things obviously have changed. This isn't doing its whole animated little dance thing that it did, but it cloned pretty much everything else over, right? So there's no edit functionality. There's no ask AI about it. We can hook that stuff up later, but the AI summary is here. We got the raw transcript, different buttons for like uploading it, sharing it, all of that. We have our mocked up AI chat. So basically what we're asking for it to do is to make a very minimal MVP of the following functionality, okay? And you can, again, you'll be able to just copy this. The only part you need to fill in is the stuff down here based on what your app actually is. And do not make this too wild. Try to be pretty concise with what you're asking. We can always go back through, create a new chat and iterate. So try to be concise about what you are asking. And again, guys, we can see it made its plan. So it just finished. That maybe took... Uh, in real world minutes, probably like seven minutes. I think that thing was probably running, doing all of this. The one thing I've noticed though, inside of my a terminal is that it's giving me an error that my open AI key is not there, even though it is. And so I'm going to really quickly try to figure out why that's happening. And then we will open this thing up and see if it works. So we fixed that environment variable, the API key. So let's see what this looks like. Testing one, two, three. Hello, my name is Sean. I am so, so cool. Okay, so we can pause it. We can see the state changes a little bit. If we hit this process button, it says it's transcribing the audio. And there we go. So transcription, testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, my name is Sean. I'm so cool. So that's pretty cool, right? Because we didn't go in and configure any of this voice recording type stuff. So we could say, okay, now if we go into notes, we should see, which we do, the transcripts coming through. Um, but the note is not actually being found when we click in. So we got a little state management issue there. And so what I would do from here is pop back in. Basically, again, what we're trying to fix here is that when I click into this, like it should not say no note found, right? Because there's there's a note there. And so this is what we are trying to fix now. Now, while that is rolling through, one other thing we can test. So we built this AI assistant, if you remember that. So we could ask it a question to see if it's actually using the, uh, the language model. So we could say like, what's the furthest known galaxy from Earth? I don't know the answer to this, actually. I'd be curious to know the answer. GNZ11. Maybe there's someone on GNZ11 right now trying to vibe code an app. 13.4 uh, billion light years. So there you have it, guys. And then there's a few things that we would probably want to add on top of this. We'd want to add user authentication so that we can actually log in and log out and other people can register. We'd probably want to improve the UI and the UX. It looks a little bit basic. So we would want to go through an exercise, which I have a bunch of on my channel where we would do that type of thing and make it really pop and really look professional. We'd want to actually make sure we're employing some sort of like security exercise to make sure that it's not super easy for someone to just break in and steal all of our users stuff. And then number four, we'd want to actually get it in the hands of real users, real people to see if they enjoy this thing and what we would want to continue building toward in the future. So if you want more detailed guides that can take us from kind of what we did today, but on a much more advanced level where we can build a lot bigger things, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that is exactly the type of stuff that I like to do. And of course, all of the prompts that we went through in this video will be given away for free in the description below. So that's it. I will see you next time.